So if you want to teach in Texas, well, you're going to have to pass a TEXES certification exam. And pretty much all these exams have a math section on them. Now, what I have for you here is an algebra problem that you should be able to solve if you're ready for exams like the 4 through 8 exam. But uh, it's just a good idea to know as much mathematics as you possibly can, especially for these more challenging exams in order to pass your TEXES exam. All right, so let's take a look at this question. We have 3 plus 2i, all of this being squared. So this is a complex number, and we want to square this complex number. And we want to do this without using a calculator. Now, I'm going to show you exactly how to solve this in just one second. But uh, if you need help with any particular TEXES exam, the math section on it, Make sure to check out the links in the description of this video. I have a ton of test prep courses that can help you out. Matter of fact, I probably should tell you who I am. My name is John, and I have been teaching math for decades. And I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, so I certainly know what it's like to take certification exams. All right, so let's take a look at this problem. Again, we have 3 plus 2i, all of this being squared. What is the answer? Well, let's get into it right now. And the first thing that we need to understand is that we're dealing with a complex number. So a complex number is uh, in the form, excuse me, in the form of a plus bi. But let's just quickly contrast a complex number to another type of number that we learned about. Okay, so here is the real number line. So we have zero in the middle. Then we have like one, two, etc. Here we have negative one negative 2, and then of course we have all these fractions, both positive and negative, these decimals, rational numbers, etc., etc. So every number on this line is part of the real number system. And uh, pretty much this is what we work with up until we get into things like Algebra 1, certainly Algebra 2, and uh, more advanced mathematics. Now, uh, oftentimes we can't solve problems or we can't find the answer or the solution to a problem in the real number system. We need another, num another number system, and that is the complex number system. And the complex number system actually has the real number system as a subset. Okay, so the complex number system has uh, numbers in the form of A plus BI, where A is the real number part, and the BI is the imaginary number part. So let's just quickly review, review an imaginary number. Okay, so an imaginary number would be something like this. So if I asked you to find the square root of negative 4, all right, so if I asked you to find the square root of negative 4, well, we can't find the answer to this question on the real number line, okay, because it's not uh, 2, because 2 times 2 is a positive 4, and the answer here is not negative 2 because negative 2 times negative 2 is a positive 4 as well. So what is the answer to the square root of negative 4? Well, again, it's not in the real number system. It's in the complex number system. So let's define what an imaginary number is because that is uh, part of a complex number. So an imaginary number or the imaginary component is i. Okay, so we define it as i is equal to the square root of negative 1. Okay, so what we can do here is the square root of negative 4, we can write this this way. So this is 4 times a negative 1. So we have the square root of 4 times a negative 1 is the same thing as the square root of negative 4. Now we can go ahead and break apart this uh, square root into two separate square roots. So we have the square root of 4 times the square root of negative 1. And by definition, the square root of negative 1 is i. So the square root of 4 is 2. So the answer here is 2i. Okay, so that is what the imaginary component is. So in our problem, this part here is the imaginary uh, component because we have an i and i is equal to the square root of negative 1, and then here is the real number component. So if you understand that, that is fantastic. So again, 
a complex number has the form a plus bi. So let me go ahead and erase uh, all of this right now and talk about how we actually find the answer. So we have a plus bi, and this is being squared. But uh, really what we have here is a binomial. So if I asked you what is a plus b squared from a simple algebraic standpoint, how would you find the answer? Well, what you would do, let me go ahead and write it this way, a plus b squared is equal to a plus b times a plus b. This is what a plus b squared means. And then you would use something like the FOIL method to do this uh, math to figure out the answer. And that's exactly what we're going to do right here. We need to look at this as a binomial and then just simply multiply each of these binomials to uh, simplify and get the right answer. But uh, there's a little bit of a twist. I'll show you that in just one second. But uh, first, let's go ahead and set up the problem. So 3 plus 2i squared is equal to what? Well, that's going to be 3 plus 2i times 3 plus 2i. Okay, so let me write that a little bit clearer. 3 plus 2i. All right, so now what, what we're going to do is multiply these two binomials. So you can use a technique like FOIL, first, outer, inner, last. But to hopefully you know how to multiply two binomials. So here is our first term. So 3 times 3 is what? Well, that is 9 plus now our outer terms is 3 and 2i. So 3 times 2i is 6i. Okay, now that's our outer. Our inner terms is 2i and 3, so that's going to be plus another 6i. And then our last terms is 2i and 2i. So 2i times 2i is 4i squared. All right, so if you understand that, well, we're well on our way to getting the right answer. So let's go ahead and combine like terms. So I have 9 plus 12i, 6i plus 6i is 12i plus 4i squared. Now here's the problem. Now we have a complex number and we're squaring it, okay? So the square of a complex number is also going to be a complex number in the form of a plus bi. So we're not done until we uh, get down to a complex number. So this part right here is a complex number, but we have this 4i squared. So what do we uh, what do we do with this? Well, let's take a look at i again. So i is the square root of negative 1. So what do you think i squared is? Well, if I square both sides, i squared is going to be negative 1, right? So if i is equal to the square root of negative 1 and i square both sides, I have i squared is equal to negative 1. And what we're going to do right here is replace this i squared with a negative 1. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. And uh, once we uh, uh, actually plug in a negative 1 for this i squared, we will be pretty much done. So we have 9 plus 12i plus 4, not times i squared, but a negative 1. So now 9 plus 12i plus 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. So now we have 9 plus 12i plus a negative 4, and then 9 uh, plus a negative 4. We got two whole numbers here, or two real numbers, excuse me. 4 and negative i is what? Well, that is 5. So we have 5 plus 12i. And finally, we have a complex number. Okay, we have the real component, and we have the imaginary component. Okay, so this is the answer. Now, what we're talking about here is things that you will learn, like in a first-year algebra course, sec uh, certainly in a uh, second-year uh, algebra course and courses like college algebra, etc. So if you're new to taking a, uh, a certification exam in Texas, don't be surprised if you, you know, need to know a lot of algebra. There's a lot of different certification exams, so you need to know exactly what math you will be tested on them. Now, again, if you check out the various links in the description of this video, I kind of already did that work for you. 
but you might be surprised that you're going to need to know a lot of algebra and geometry and more advanced mathematics even for you know elementary level grades okay so just because you're going to be maybe like an elementary school teacher doesn't mean that you need to or you're kind of exonerated from learning or knowing algebra and geometry all right so pretty much a good general rule of thumb for these certification exams is that you're going to have to be strong in high school level mathematics so with all that being said i definitely wish you all the best in your teaching career thank you for your time and have a great day